Hey there, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to do a travel EDC combination video. So uh, when I was living in Portland, there was, there was a great YouTuber that I enjoyed following called, um, oh, what was his name? Um, Urban Prepper. So he uh, did a lot of videos about prepping in everyday carry in an urban environment. And there's a lot of these guys out there that have that talk about everyday carry and prepping in an urban environment and in a rural environment. Today, we're going to talk about basically doing a little bit of prepping and basically everyday carry while traveling, which puts a little bit of a spin on it because obviously when you're going through security checkpoints, TSA and their foreign counterparts, uh, really limits what you can carry with you. There are um, a lot of channels about self-defense and everyday carry. Uh, what's your best firearm? What's your best knife? None of that can be applied when you're traveling around with one bag carry. If you checked a bag, maybe you could take a knife. But as you probably noticed on this channel, I'm all about the one bag carry, carry on. I don't like to be separated from my luggage, which makes it nice for, for many um, quick flight changes. So what can you actually take on an airplane and have a reasonable everyday carry um, collection of tools with you? So first of all, talk about wallets. So there's tons of cool wallets out there. If you look online, there's, uh, there's all sorts of things. I have the absolute most basic wallet. I find this helps my back too. I'm not sitting on a ton of stuff. I carry my ID. I actually carry my real ID with me. Uh, because here in Ecuador, they like to see this. Now, what ID I have in the wallet is going to vary per country, obviously. I actually got caught by this funny story. I was in the U.S. driving and realized that I still had my Ecuadorian ID on me, and I had forgot to grab my actual U.S. driver's license. Luckily, I didn't get stopped. So, obviously, make sure you get the right ID on you when, per country. Now, you know, if you're also in Ecuador, you know you have to have your Mega Maxi card with you at all times in case you need to go to the grocery store. And I carry a credit card. Did I expose my number? No, I did not. Okay. I carry a credit card with me. Do I carry a debit card with me? Sometimes, but I tend to take it out frequently. Um, and the one I carry with me has very little money in the account. I actually physically move the money out of the account and keep only very little in there. Why is that? Well, any place that's going to take a debit card will also take your credit card. Will they take the American Express? That's a whole nother video. I don't have a problem using my American Express in pretty much every place I go. So I, I carry that with me because, as you know, I don't like to spend money that I don't get points for spending money. So why don't I carry a debit card with me and why do I limit my debit card use, especially overseas? It's simple. There's a ton of protections for credit cards, very little protections uh, on the debit cards. I'm not an expert on this. I'm going to link a video uh, by Frank Abernathy that talks in detail about why you should only carry a credit card and never a debit card. This is a controversial topic. I know that people don't like credit cards. Some people like debit cards. I'm simply talking from a security of your money standpoint. And I'll link his video in the description of why I only carry my credit card with me, except when I think I'm going to be going to the ATM to get money. I think he's extreme. He actually doesn't own an ATM card at all. I do keep one. I just don't carry it that much. So I do not take six credit cards. I do not take my health insurance card, my library card, uh, my DMV card from five years ago, my DMV card from Oregon and Washington. Yeah, I don't carry a ton of cards. I carry one ID, one credit card, and of course, my Mega Maxi card when I go to the grocery store. I don't load up with all my cards. I do have photos of different cards that I need on my phone. So if I need my health card, which doesn't come up that much, they're going to treat you at the hospital, whether you, you have insurance or not. You can deal out the payment of it later. But I do keep a photo of it on my phone in case I need to keep a photo of many things on my phone. I keep my passport photo. I, don't know, I do not carry my passport on a daily basis overseas. There are countries like Mexico, I think, insist that you carry it, but I just carry a photo, and I think most people do. Uh, I don't need one in Ecuador. I don't need one in most countries I go to to keep my passport handy because I have, obviously, IDs for those countries. I also have an ID for Mexico, so it doesn't 
the passport thing doesn't apply to me either. But I don't recommend carrying your passport all the time because if it gets stolen, that's a big hassle. I do recommend, though, if you don't have an ID for the country, you do have to carry your passport with you. Carry a paper copy and have a photocopy. If the cops get cranky about it, want to see a real one, you can take them back to see a real one. Not legal advice. Do what you want to do. I'm saying I don't carry my own passport with me on a regular basis. What I do sometimes carry, though, if I want an ID handy, is um, I carry my passport card. Now, that's not a legal device to get you through airport securities and whatnot, but it is an ID. It is a federal ID, and I have used that to get into bars and other places that, in foreign countries where they see it. They don't necessarily know what it is. They just know it's a U.S. ID, and they accept it. Uh, as in ID purposes. Now, again, that's not going to get you on an airplane, but when you're just cruising around, you need an ID, you need to be identified, people need to know who you are, or you need to get past some bouncer to get into a bar. It's worked fine for that. And who cares if that gets stolen? You know, it's, you don't need it to get out of the country. Uh, you can, you, uh, you still have your passport safe and secure or a photo of your passport, or I think, uh, like if you can, obviously get IDs in the country you're at, temporary permanent residence for the countries that you're going to. So the other thing I carry with me is usually a set of tools. I carry two primary tools with me all the time. What, so I've had TSA multi-tools, TSA-friendly multi-tools. Well, you know who doesn't know what a TSA-friendly multi-tool is? Mexico TSA. I don't know what they're called in Mexico, but we'll call it Mexico TSA or Ecuador TSA. They don't know that's a okay multi-tool. And so I've had those, uh, the TSA friendly Leathermans confiscated uh, from me in foreign countries. It's sad. It's, you know, what, a 30 buck loss though. What I've never had confiscated from me so far are these little cool credit card tools. I don't know if you've seen these. I'll put a link to the ones that I have, but the, there's entire like YouTube videos on the best ones of these, et cetera, et cetera. These are pretty cool. Uh, they have the most important tool that you need when living on a beach, which is the bottle opener, uh, which, of course, you always need with you. It's got a little Phillips head screwdriver. It's got a flathead screwdriver. It's got adjustable for wrenching. There's usually a edge that's relatively sharp for cutting through boxes and things like these. That uh, That's here, a little pry tool. These are great. I love this. I carry these with me all the time. I always have one in my pocket. And actually, it's not this one. They have ones that, that are regular and ones that come with a money clip. And I love the ones with the money clip. And the reason is, is, and I was going to talk about this in a minute, but a lot of people recommend that you keep a fake wallet because there are countries where pickpockets um, happen a lot. So, um, I'm living in one of them, Ecuador, uh, Barcelona, Spain is the pickpocket capital of the world. So what I like about these things is when I'm out and about, now, if I'm just going to the mall or going to a, a, my neighborhood where I live all the time and it's during the day and it's not crowded, yeah, I just carry my wallet with me. But if I'm going out at night in the big crowds, uh, no, I don't take my wallet with me. I stick a, usually an ID I don't care about, like the passport card or a paper ID, one credit card um in american express don't don't fry me but there are places that don't take american express so for the one credit card i actually usually carry a visa it's still a points card though so i still get points for it um i take one id one credit card i put cash on here that's what i take with me it's in my front pocket much harder to pickpocket if it gets pickpocketed i'm losing a little cash in a cheap tool and an ID that um, I can replace easily. So uh, that is what I tend to carry. For self-defense, it gets a little harder when you're traveling. The one thing I've seen for self-defense that I've had luck with are tactical pins. I don't know if you've ever heard of these, but basically it is a pin. It is truly a pin. It's in a hard case metal, and it usually has some sort of pointish end on it that is good for even breaking like tempered glass, like the um, the glass on the side windows of your car if you need to get something out of a car or something was locked in. It's obviously going to make quite an impression if this is jabbed in any part of the human body. So these are, they're, they're not particularly lethal, at least not in my hands, 
but they are good to get somebody's attention and, and get away from somebody. They're a real pen. You always have a pen. And when I travel, I cover up the defensive end. When I travel on airplanes, I should say, I cover up the defensive end of it. I just have a pen. I've taken one similar to this, not this particular one, on nine flights uh, back over the summer. And no problem. I just, I don't carry it on my person. I stick it in the bag that I take on the plane with me in the pen spot. So they see, oh, yep, that's a pen. It's in the pen spot on your bag and it looks like a pen. It's good to go. I've never had any problem. I think technically I did see on the TSA website that they don't um, support you carrying this, the US TSA. But I, like I said, I went through nine flights in three different countries. I never had any problems with this. Worst case scenario, they take it away. It's a $20 tool. But it's pretty handy to have with you. Nice little self-defense. You can watch a ton of videos on those about how to um, use them and what are the best ones to buy. I'll put a link to the ones that I have in the description, along with the link to the my tools here that I have and to the uh, um, Frank Abernathy video that talks about using a credit card versus your debit cards. So the other thing I wanted to sort of emphasize is we had an incident here actually not too long ago where um, one of um, the expats living down in the area in Ecuador was in the mall. He fainted. It happens. You know, um, his Spanish was um, not there, so he couldn't really communicate when he came to. He was was not communicating when he was obviously picked up and taken to the hospital. So his family just knew that he was gone. He had no way to contact his family. He had no ID. And this was an issue for him and his family. His family was obviously very worried. This all worked out. Simple fainting thing. He was released from the hospital, got home. Uh, there was postings on the expat communication sites. In most countries, there's expat sites like either WhatsApp or Facebook groups or both. And, um, you know, they were able to figure out where he was. He came home, all was good. But what would have made this just a lot easier is if he had ID on him. He did not have ID. He probably just, I don't need ID. I'm running out to the mall. I don't want to risk taking my passport. Don't blame him. Make a copy and carry a paper copy. Carry an ID with you. Even if you don't want to carry your legal ID, make an ID so authorities who find you know who you are and can contact your family. Put a number, a contact number on those IDs is nice. Now, one piece of EDC that everybody has is, of course, your telephone. These are super valuable. They got maps of the countries. I have a map of the countries I'm going to download, at least the cities, although in these small Latin American countries, I download the entire country to my phone. Obviously important for communications because um, you can use Google Translate for the languages you don't know well, and they're great. But they're also the number one thing that gets stolen from you. If somebody's going to pickpocket you and grab something from you, your wallet is great, your phone's better. So your phone's going to be gone. If you have a medical incident, assume your phone's going to be stolen from you. If you get mugged, your phone's going. And they're hard to hide. They're, they know to look for your phone. If you're out walking around and you tell some criminal that, oh, I don't have my phone with me, yeah, they're not going to believe you. So you need to be prepared to lose your phone. The way I'm prepared to lose my phone is I have these TSA approved belts. I have a non-TSA one too, but you can get these belts that will breeze through security. And they have these cool little pockets on the inside here. So inside here, I have this obviously high-priced glad resealable bag. And inside here, I carry phone numbers. Because I don't know about you, but I'm a phone cripple. If I lost my phone, I couldn't even call my wife. So I have on, it's, I'm not going to show you the printed side, but on the other side, I've got a relatively small print, although I could read it with my glasses or I can read it without. Actually, that's kind of a key. I did make sure I could read it without my glasses. I've got the phone numbers of my wife, my lawyer, local contacts in the country that I'm in that I want to contact. So this is handy. If I lost my phone or if it was stolen, I can still call people. This is not the piece of paper for emergencies. You want that written in something a little bit more obvious, like on your paper copy of the ID, your wife's number, your friend's number to call, whoever you want to have called in an emergency. 
this is for you. Um, if you lose your phone and you need to make a call because you've been mugged. The other thing I carry here is a 20. This is going to get you home. It's going to get you a taxi back. Yeah. I'm talking Latin America. This 20 is going to get me um, anything I want. Uh, if you're over in Europe, maybe you want to carry two 20s or something, but this is going to get me home. This is going to get me a taxi. It's going to get me water. This is going to get me food. I do not recommend this in the U.S., but also at times, especially in Latin America, sometimes the police can be a little difficult. So I always carry 100 with me, too. So 100 is going to get you home no matter where you are. It's also going to get you going to get you out of any made up uh, gap, uh, made up incidences with the local police. I don't, not really encouraging bribery. I don't know how you fall on that, but it's a real thing. And if you don't want to argue principle with the police officer at night after you've been mugged, you just want to go home and you need a payoff. Hundred is going to get you paid off in any country in Latin America, and probably any country in the world, with the exception of actually, oddly enough, the U.S. But everybody knows what a U.S. 100 looks like. So, random advice. So, I carry these with me. That way, if I do lose my phone, I still have, and I lose my wallet, I still have the ability to pay. I have the ability to call. So, I can find a phone from somebody to borrow. And I still have cash to get myself, get myself back home. So, that's what I carry with me when I'm out and about. Everything I've I've shown you, I've been able to get on and off airplanes several times in multiple countries without any problems. I assume at some point in time, somebody is going to take away that credit card tool because it's metal. They're going to think it's dangerous. I assume at some point in time, somebody is going to take away that um, tactical pen. But they're cheap items that I'm more than willing to lose, um, you know, once in so many flights. I hope you find this interesting. If you do, hit the like and subscribe button. I will have more videos coming out lately. It's been a little bit of a gap here. I think the most exciting video I've got coming up is I need to renew my passport. I'm going to do it from outside the U.S. And I'll document that process for you and how much fun it was. So take care and have safe travels. Bye.